If I decide to type in some text in Photoshop, I can use generative fill to come up with some pretty nifty effects. If I control click on my layer to select that, I do have to expand, otherwise I end up getting a yellow halo. I go to select, modify and expand by two pixels or three pixels even. I can now give this text an effect. For example, I can say graffiti paint and hit generate. You can see it actually looks like it's been painted on the wall. And as usual, I have my different options. I can determine the color as well. Either way, it does a pretty good job of turning that text into something that doesn't look like it's just been typed in Photoshop. So that's what happens when you select the layer itself. But we can also do something with the outside. If I bin this layer completely, and at the moment this text is yellow, I'm going to make it more of a lime green. And to make it stand out, I'm going to darken the background. This time we can control click the layer, and I go to Select, Modify, and Contract. And I can track it by about, let's say, four pixels or three pixels. So it cuts into that text just a little bit. I then go to Select, Inverse, and now I've selected the outside of the text. But I also want to deselect some of this area so that, that way it can refer to that wall. And this may take a few, a few things to, to actually make a few tries to get something you want. But if you go to Generative Fill, maybe I type in Graffiti, Fluoro, yellow brick wall generate and it's added a little bit top and bottom there add a little bit more here or completely wiped it out but just remember you can keep re-rolling so i can turn this layer off and keep it for later if i want to but what i can also do again is i can control click on this layer as i did before go to select modify and expand give it say two pixels and again i can go to generative fill and say graffiti spray paint on wall and hit generate. And I can still choose the texture that I think looks best. Maybe something like this. And the cool thing about this is if I remove this here, I can still control click my mask. Although it's actually added a bit of space around that text. So instead I will control click the text itself, click on this layer and I can even adjust it. I can go to image adjustments curves I can brighten that up if I want to. So you can adjust these generations as well. Now, another cool thing, now that I have that texture in place, I can control click the text once again, but this time I go to select inverse and I've selected around that text and I remove the areas I don't want to be affected. I add a few selective areas, making sure not to select over the text itself. I hit generative fill, graffiti art on brick wall, and now it should actually work around that text. I'll hit generate. And you can see again, we've added some text around. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say cartoon characters, graffiti, and re-roll. Now we get this cool design here, which is not bad. We've also got some other bits and pieces we can try. This one's probably the best so far, but the idea is you can simply continue to re-roll and try different things. So we'll add in dripping graffiti. We've been able to add this little outline to it, which I think is pretty cool. But let's say we're happy with that, but not quite. There's a few changes we wanna make. What I can do is because we have a layer mask here, so I can select that layer mask, grab the black brush, I can bring the size down, maybe bring the hardness up to whatever you think is going to work best. And I can even remove some of these bits and pieces around the text if I want to bring it out a bit more to what it was. If I don't like this section in general, I can just remove that in the mask and just keep this effect here. And that's just with a simple text layer. Now you don't have to have just one layer. I can actually have two separate text layers. I can go control to click and select that one, then control shift to click the next layer. And what I can also do is not just stick to what we we're doing before. I can go to select, modify and contract by say three pixels. And I can start to work on something on the inside of the text. 
So maybe I go to generate and type in bright yellow fire. And you can see how I do get this result here. I can still keep that there again, but this time I can actually grab a square. I'm also gonna hold down, hold down Alt to cut out a bit down here and I'm not gonna keep this too high. I can hit Control Alt on each layer as long as I hover over the T to deselect the text area. I can go to Generative Fill and just type in Flaming Text. You can see how it's actually added some flames around that and I can choose a different one. I think this one looks pretty cool. And at the same time, this one still sits above it. We can turn that off and on. And we've actually got like some flaming text. It's not the most best looking example, but it is there. And again, if I do turn that off, I can still move these layers above that. I could even change that text to black and have an effect like that. So you've got a few options with how you're selecting the text and what you can actually get out of it. And here's another effect you can try. I've got a blank document. I'm gonna make the background black and I'm gonna type in some text. Now a little bit of design work goes into this now, but with the fire, I'm gonna go into my blending options and just give it an outer glow. And I'm gonna make that outer glow like an orange color. And the ice, I'm gonna do the same. The outer glow is gonna be more of a blue color. And I position them the way I want. And I'm gonna just behind that draw a very subtle with my paintbrush, just a very subtle sort of red color, then a subtle blue color, and I'm just gonna bring that opacity down. So what I've done, so what I've done is created an image that has some basic colors and layouts. The white stands out very starkly against the black with a little bit of softening around that. So I'm just gonna hit Control A to select the whole layer. Now do not leave the text selected, open and create a blank layer above everything. Otherwise you can change the layer of the text with this method. But I go into my quick mask over here or I click Q. On my color palette, I choose about a 50% gray. So somewhere in the middle here will do it. It doesn't have to be precise. And I paint bucket my 50% gray into the quick mask. I hit Q to exit. We get a warning, which we just click OK. Now it doesn't look like anything is selected, but it is. What we do now is go to generative fill and we go fire and ice and hit generate. And you can see it's actually generated some ice at the bottom, but not really much at the top. If I go back into our properties though, we have a few options. We have this one, fire and ice, fire and ice. So that's all pretty cool. It's actually worked with that text, but here is where it's also fun again. If I have this text, this selected as it is, maybe I choose the second one. I'm gonna go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, just to blur it up a little bit so we can still read the text, but it still has that basic background. Once again, I select all, go to quick mask, fill with gray, leave, hit okay. I go to generative fill, and this time I'm gonna type in again, fire and ice. I'm gonna type in effect this time, hit generate. And again, we've got some effects to choose from here. It's probably not the best. Apart from the blurred text, this one I think looks the best. I'm not a big fan of the blurry text though. But from that, we can still take this layer and move it down underneath our text and keep that text in there if we want to. We can even change that opacity. And it's not just about changing the text, but adding effects around the text is pretty handy. So just a few different ways you can manipulate text Sometimes you, I mean, quite often you don't get the best results, but it is something worth playing with. And I just wanted to share that. So I really recommend having a play with that and just trying to see what you can do because because of the selection tools in Photoshop, there's a lot of different things you can try when it comes to using text with generative fill. These aren't the best examples, but uh, just give you some methods to try and uh, I hope you have a bit of fun with it. Otherwise, that's the video for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider giving it a like. Otherwise, hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.